Jom Rob so my brothers and sisters, how is it going? We are Bangladesh back once again with another new reaction video. Guys, the video we are going to be reacting today is totally something different. I got a suggestion and I couldn't ignore this video. This video is by Laura Ma'am. She is, you know, talking in uh, TEDx uh, Talks, which is one of the most famous, uh, you know, organization or whatever you say, a platform where people can talk about their culture, talk about sometimes motivational, sometimes even they perform. If you guys have seen TEDx before, you know what it is. And this is international. This is like all around the world. You will find people from Nigeria to Australia, Australia to America, Europe, Cambodia, everywhere. So this is a huge platform for especially if you want to be educated, uh, you know, in like uh, culture, uh, you know, like, what do you say, like global stuff, then this is one of the best channels, I would say that. So why it's so interesting today, because Laura Ma'am, she from Barami Production belongs from her, I guess, right? She is like friends of Venda or whatever, the coordinator of them. She had her speech or she had a talk about how music revolution changes Cambodia in Cambodia. So this is what she's gonna, you know, talk about. After watching the video, we're gonna be talking. Let's watch it together. And the best part of this video is uh, the video is gonna be in English. So I'm gonna be understanding. And uh, let's see what Lara Ma'am got to say about the revolution of Cambodian music. <coughs> So this video was 2018, that's pretty long time ago, like four years back. Wow, man. I didn't know that she was that famous or that influential that time. So I'm I'm oh, I'm <laughs> Not English? Oh, okay, okay, okay. You need some energy. Ah, so, yeah. um, yes, my name is Laura Mam. I am Laura Mom, actually. And <laughs> I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about original music. How many of you like original music? Please raise your hands. Everybody, okay. everybody. Okay. Laura so, Mom. A lot of you do. And I want to tell you a little bit about it because I've had a very unique perspective about it. But before I do that, I kind of want to talk about why it's important. And I hope you guys really enjoy what I have to say. So, what are the two things that tourists know about Cambodia more than anything else? Can anybody tell me what they know? Angkor Wat. Khmer Rouge. Khmer Rouge. What else they know? Yeah. This is the only thing people know about Music. Cambodia. Music. And it's a sad thing because of course, it's wonderful what we have. We have beautiful temples and we have this terrible history with the Khmer Rouge. Mm -hmm. But we have more than that. And the, the, the thing that's sad about this to me is that this story is about loss, suffering, sadness, and devastation. Right. There's She's nothing positive absolutely about right. this story. So I want to challenge this story, and I want, the reason I wanted to come out on TED today is because I want to challenge this story, because I think that there's something much more positive that's happening. So I'm going to tell you the same story of Cambodia, but I'm going to tell it to you in a totally different light, okay? okay. So let's move to the next slide. Um, I, is my mom here? Is she must Who be is here. It? Hey, mommy, can we get a homo yeah, my mommy? Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's my mommy. All right. So I, I was born in America. I, my no. parents were both refugees. They went through the entire war. It was a terrible time for them, but they got to oh. America and they decided they were going to thrive for me and my brother. So mm. my mom didn't teach me Khmer. This is why I yay bai lam bai lam all the time. Oh. But they didn't teach me Khmer because she was afraid I didn't know that. of an accent when I was in America. And she wanted me to be American. She didn't want anybody to look at me and be like, my. Uh, not an American. So uh. she didn't teach me, but the way that she kept me interested and the way that she preserved identity of Cambodia for me is by putting me in Khmer dancing and teaching, having me go to some Khmer schooling. I learned about go, oh. call, go, 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 all that good stuff, right? Uh -huh. But she pulled me aside one day and she said to me, Laura, you're an American, but oh, you it's cannot mother. forget complete, that your blood is Khmer. Oh, and this that's one a... thing she said to me would kind of change my life forever, and it kind of marked the entire. No, let's pack to her mom, so man. Far. So, 
what ended up happening, I don't know if any, many of you know this, but I didn't plan to be a pop star in Cambodia. That was not my plan. I was planning to study dirt. I wanted to be an archaeologist. I wanted to be... Really? A, you know, digging up stuff, <laughs> finding stuff, find a pot and Uncle Wat, and that's all I wanted to do. Um, I had no plans. And so after college, I, I went to UC Berkeley. I studied anthropology with a focus on Cambodian history. And this really made me fall in love with Cambodia. This is where I found my passion. That's your root, lady. And afterwards, I ended that's up... That's what you are. <laughs> basically joining an NGO called Global Heritage Fund, and I started working in preservation and conservation. But unfortunately, I got fired and that sucked because in 2008, we suffered some economic devastation in America. And basically, my boss said, Laura, I'm sorry, I have to let you go because oh. there's just no more money for you. But not the usual day you, in America. I'm gonna YouTube videos. I'm going to give you a $3,000 check so you can go to Cambodia and do your music. And I was like, mm. <laughs> sweet. OK, cool, whatever. I lost my job, but maybe I'll go to Cambodia and see what happens. Things went very well in Cambodia, and I got to become a part of this movement called the Original Music Movement. And I got to do all this fun stuff. I went on all these stages, and I went to all these different things, and it was really exciting. And the Original Music Movement swept me up into this magical music adventure that I've been on. And basically, afterwards, what I decided to do was start a production label called Oh uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Kai was right. Barami Production. Yeah, those was my boys. That was me. So, um, but I started a label and I wanted to support other original artists because we were struggling. So I wanted to, I, I wanted to tell lady you that, coming from you know, America. this movement is unique. Not speaking no in, else, not speaking no to mine. country Kamai. has an original music movement. Everybody just has normal music. Yeah, Every time I true. say original music to a foreigner, they're like, what do you mean original music? Uh -huh. It's just us. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that history so that you can understand it and you can appreciate your artists more. And I hope... What you get out of this conversation that we have today is basically more love, more appreciation, and more excitement and hope when you think about the exciting times of Cambodia through the lens of original music. Mm. So when we started in Cambodia, before we even started, during the Khmer Rouge, they did not allow any music. How many mm. of you know this? They did not allow any music that didn't support Anka, so no music that didn't support the communist regime. But when they left, this left this huge void, this huge void in Cambodia. And you guys were either babies at this time, or you were not yet around. How so long before? What? How long this before there was? There was a massive void in Cambodia, and it was quite sad. So they had to fill it. So they killed a lot of artists, what I heard. All these productions that you know and have known since you were a young person. Everything is gone. They filled the void. What they did is they kept covering old songs as a form of preservation. Mm. And as a form of keeping up with the rest of society, they started copying songs. Mm. Yeah, that's a problem. Copy song? That's a problem. How many of you yeah, like everybody, man. Song? Everybody. Okay, hey. So that happens right? in everywhere. Let's be honest. They did entertain us. Mm -hmm. But... What ended up happening as a result of this is that we ended up not making any new music. Right, that's it a good point. Because we had such high levels of piracy in Cambodia, no copyright enforcement, it became impossible. Mm, that was a big problem in my country as well. So they didn't support it. Early 2000s, especially. So that's what you get here. We got Sake Lo So, Take Me to Your Heart, Brib Savat. These are all these songs that we know, but this is how we stayed kept up with some of the modernity. Mm, fact. Fact. For me, I didn't understand this when I was in the United States. I saw Mpote V, I saw these beautiful images of Sapiap, very sweet Khmer girls. But I, I didn't understand it because I was watching people like Lauren Hill and she was playing guitar and she was talking about her generation and she was saying, yeah, screw the man, I'm going to speak to people. And I loved it. So what ended up happening when I did She got a beautiful way of presentation. Is this. I became the sweet chick, the nice appeal, nice girl. But I also wanted to be the edgy Lauren Hill. I'm going to mm. speak my voice. And she this got is what got me to come to Cambodia. Is I kind of got tired of saying to people, I, I tried to explain, why don't we have original music? I, I couldn't explain. I had no explanation. So I had to come myself, and I decided to just go for it and find out what's going on. So I came. That was a big people, movement, hey, man. That's like to speak to a TV head, and he you're said, living in a foreign country. 
Nobody cares about original music. Mm. I was like, even yeah, explaining yeah, to people it's really difficult. About original music, <laughs> and he's like, "Nah, they just care if your face is pretty." <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. okay, so that made me angry. So I was like, "Okay, forget it. I'm not going to even try on that side." I went to a production company, and I said, "Ah, Laura, you're Sparrow Monkey. Cool, I like it. Let's do something together." And I said, "Okay." My condition is that we're going to do original music. And he said, look, I cannot support you. I cannot support you doing original music. You must copy songs because uh. I can't sell a disc at more than $1.50. Mm. So I can't, I, can't get, I can't have you only doing one album a year. Mm. What would I make? I would make right. money. I would close down tomorrow. Two. So I said, mm, That's I the business money. So at that time, the word I kept hearing music is business. impossible. It's impossible to do Cambod Cambodian original music. But me and a few other artists, quite a few other artists, didn't believe that. Mm. So what this happened lady is brave. was Facebook. I love Facebook. How many of you use Facebook? Each and everyone, follow me on Facebook. On YouTube? Yeah, how many people love YouTube more than Facebook? More yeah, than see? Facebook. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, Maybe. But, but it was this incredible thing that happened when you guys were starting to grow up. So Facebook and YouTube came, and suddenly you didn't have to go to a TV station, or you didn't have to go to buy a, a CD or anything and get put mm. out in a VCD or a DVD. Right, you right. Do that anymore. Right. You could just get yourself up on the internet, and you could connect with any fan in Batambang or Siem Reap or Kupongspu. You could connect, and this changed everything. This brought out some of the artists that you know and you love. So this is where we found people like Ada and Hang Pitu, and we had Clap Your Hands doing hip hop. Do you guys remember these guys? How many of you love it home more if you love I these don't guys? know them. Yeah, see? Hey guys, let and me I, know I anything you know about them. I don't know really know them. Opinion? Raise your hand. Yeah? How many of you love her some home No okay. idea. Introduce me, guys. Ms. Sophia did something really revolutionary. And she, nobody, no newspaper or anybody has done anything to say that what she did was cool. She was in the system. She was a karaoke star. She was doing what she was told. And at this time, she said, no, I'm going to do original music. So she wow. came out with All Lies, first original album. From what wow. I heard, the company was upset. They didn't want to support it. They didn't want... They want money. Want they don't so give a fuck about, about music. Sophia, you better love her a little bit more because she fought for original music. She fought for her right to do it. And she said, mm. I'm going to do it. So these revolutionary guys came out and did some really, really cool stuff. And it even gave me... A, an American Cambodian, a chance to come here and connect with all of you guys. Wow. It wasn't enough. We were still That's struggling. A big no movement. one was calling us for concerts or anything like that. We weren't making no money. We were very poor. It was very sad. So what had to happen next? Absolutely, man. When you are depending sponsors. on this, no profession. Love sponsors. Give it up for sponsors. <laughs> a bunch of sponsors Sponsor came me. and started to support us. And they started to say, hey you know what, my brand is international, I'm Pepsi, I can't take a copied song to Pepsi regional headquarters, True. and if it's copied, I, I can't play that, that's not legal. Copyright things and stuff. Standards. So all of a sudden I was like, oh, so you mean you can support us, right? And he's like, mm-hmm, yeah, let's start doing Regional, that. yeah. Where are we gonna go? So, it was really exciting. These guys came out and started supporting it, and a lot of artists started getting different things. It kind of ripped open the whole thing. What it signaled to Cambodia was that you don't have to join a production anymore. You can do it yourself. You mm. can go out there and talk to a sponsor by yourself, build yourself a PowerPoint presentation, and be like, look it, I'm awesome. Give me money. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that happened, but something really major happened, and that was smart music. So I want you guys to understand why smart music, this is not a promotion for smart music, but I want you to understand why it's important. Smart music came out and started to say publicly and said, hey, if you're an original music artist, I'm going to give you money. I'm going to give you money to make your music. Nobody ever gave us money. Nobody ever, ever did. If we did something for anyone else, we had to do a commercial, we had to do a jingle or whatever. Here was a company that said, I'm going to fund your music, just put it up on a streaming platform. Mm. What did this do? This totally ripped open a hole in the whole entire market. And this is why you guys all think original music is cool. 
because what happened was organic. It started from the ground and it came up. Mm. All these artists Boom. came out of nowhere and now you know how many artists, so many artists. Many, many. They had a chance. They had a chance to make some cash, to fund their music and actually go out and do some concerts. So it was really exciting when this all happened. Mm. What Smart did also is bring Jesse J and Demi Lovato. Do you guys remember Jesse J and Demi Lovato? How many of you went? Let me see, let me fun, see. It was fun, right? And who got to open the stage for Jesse J and Demi Lovato? That was me. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> but it was not just me. It wow, was quite a few man. more people. And we got a chance to show Cambodia and also get permission from an international artist, which is very hard to do, to open the stage for them. You need to get permission all the way to Hollywood. Right, to man. It's so we did that with them. complicated. It changed everything for us because it was a national symbol saying, hey, we're getting started. So our movement was starting to get up there. We were getting sponsors. We were starting to go for it. And then the public sector and our government started to support us too. They put us alongside Aux Kunkanya and Brixovat. Oh yeah, I know them. At the National Games opening. I know and them. And basically was a symbol. Two of my favorite artists. Symbol to say to Cambodia, yep, we have Prep so artists, And we have our new people. And that lady, both acceptable. she's also and a very good singer. People. So the public sector said, actually the ministry came out and said, you know, we should have our own original music. It's important. We can't just copy foreigners. Right. We need our own identity. It's important. So that gave us a big fat push. And finally, what happened next is we went on the first all provincial, it was a provincial tour, all original music. I'm not uh, sure if you guys yeah. realize how Man, this I. was. Before this, you could not get on an Polar. stage if you weren't like a sexy girl doing something for beer and doing karaoke. It was a monopoly. We were not allowed in, we were not getting called. But Smart decided to take us to the provinces. And now let me tell you the backstory. Every marketing agency in Cambodia said, no one is going to come watch a bunch of YouTube kids. Oh. They're not that good. They're whatever. Why are you putting money? Why are you wasting money? You should just put it over here. Right, and that man. was what we were up against. So there was a lot of disbelief leading up to this. I know you guys got to see the outside. It's just like, yay, a concert. No, there was a lot of fighting. A mm, lot of fighting that true, went to happen. And what happened when we went to the provinces? We kicked ass. <laughs> That's what happened. People came out and they sang our lyrics. They screamed for us. I don't know if any of you have been to a provincial concert before, but for the most part what happens is you go, Oh boy! <sighs> <laughs> That's usually what happens. But at these concerts, you would have thought it was a music festival in the United States. You would have thought it was Coachella. They were screaming. It was so intense. Yeah. The screaming and the support was so good that Rolin, who everybody knows, right? Everybody knows Rolin? turned to me in Kupong Spoon and said, Laura, Bong Pusabala. What is that? <laughs> she said, I'm Goose Banta. I have never oh. seen Kupong Spoon. I've never heard Kupong Spoon like this. This is crazy. This is awesome. This is amazing. So this is kind of what happened. This solidified our movement. People in the provinces, people in the city, sponsors and public got to see what we were doing. And that was because of you guys because mm. you guys decided to support us. So what I want to ask you before I go on with this presentation is to give yourself a round of applause for doing that. Yeah, man, like, Thank no, you. for you too. No, Laura, ma'am is really absolutely... All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of a closer look about what's going to happen, what's going, what is happening now in the music, and what is going to happen. So the most common question I get is... Why are Cambodian people so obsessed with love songs? Does anybody know why we're so obsessed with love songs? Why not? Anybody have an idea? They are lovers, oh, yes, romantic people. We are loving people, yes. Yeah, we're yeah, that's what I'm people. saying. I think that's absolutely true. And I want to add to that because it's kind of a, I think it's a bit of a funny story. So let's take a look at this really quickly. Um, so the Khmer population. In 1975, before the war started, Basically, we were 75. at 7.5 million Cambodians. After the war, we lost about 2.3 million people. Ooh. Artists, intellectuals, everybody. All That's a lot of people, people, man. And we don't even know what the real number of how many people died. May actually. Maybe even more. Yeah, who knows? Went down to five, five to six million. Damn, man. But from 1980 until now, the population has gone from five to six million to 16 million. Mm, damn. My mom said, They're lovers! <laughs> I know the point. <laughs> Busy with love 
Making babies? Babies. <laughs> yeah. That's all we've been doing all day long. We've just been making babies all day long. So that makes sense. That the most common subject we talk about is love. It's the most pressing thing. We are very busy with this action and we need to deal with it. Okay? <laughs> but I think there's something really interesting that I want to show you that, that gives me hope and that gets that me was hilarious. about what's going to happen in your generation. So this is what we call a baby boomer generation. After <laughs> a war, people come back and they're I love the way she prepared safe, the presentation, man. To repopulate our, our nation. Mm. So we have a baby boomer generation. So I want to take a little quick look and that's at a the fact, though. situation to give you a sense of what might happen in Cambodia going forward. So in the United States, in 1945, World War II ended. People Beatles. came back and a baby boomer generation started. In 1960, which is one of the most famous international music periods in the world, we had artists like the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, uh, the best Jay guitarist Lee, of all time, Bob Dylan, Nina Simone. He is my guitar inspiration. One of one of my about, ah, guitar sorry, inspiration. Too. But they got Americans to think about their identity. They promoted peace, love, unity. They were fighting against a really rigid conservative racism. Society, and they got everybody to start thinking even bigger. Mm, That's what they did. True. At this time, from 1960 to 1970, it was a baby boomer generation, and the average GDP rate of growth was 7.5 percent, fluctuating mm. in between. So let's take a look back at Cambodia. Cambodia right now is in a baby Good comparison. Compari the average GD GDP for 10 years, for a decade, has been 7.5, just like the United States. And we have an original music movement that is starting to speak about things beyond what we talk about every single day. So it's my belief, these numbers, it's these things that have me believing that Cambodia is on the verge of another golden music period. Right. Oh, Moy, if you agree. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. No, the way she explained so, things makes sense. To conclude this, I want to say that, you know, I really believe in your guys' generation. I, I'm going to continue to stay here. I'm going to continue to work with Cambodian music, original music industry. And I hope that you guys cool, now, man. after you've seen this, you kind of understand how much... They're going to be inspired, man. ...make this happen and how wonderful it is. And that every time you now listen to songs on Facebook, YouTube smart music, whatever, whatever you use to listen to the music, every time you click like, every time you comment, it is one more step. Right, the right, man. So I want to leave you with one lyric that is from one of my favorite songs. Um, and I think it's an amazing piece of lyric um, that's not about love, and it's about the reality that your generation is facing. And what I is think that? that I don't know, when I listened to this, this lyric, it completely just blew me away and I felt inspired for the rest. I feel inspired to keep working here for another decade or two. So, mm. um, this song is, this is song? by Kumain Kumai, it's called Kompram. How many of you guys know, don't have worry. you guys heard Kompram? Far from my family, I miss. Okay. Kumain Kumai, I'm a big fan of them. This is a lyric written by Pan Lu, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna translate it in English um, for the sake of the video. But, Please. Um, it's beautiful. I love what he wrote. And he said, far from my family, I miss them. I just want to see my father and my mother happy. Mm. Meeting and parting is always short. Your child here can only say goodbye for now. Please don't cry, my good-natured parents. Mm. I've almost reached my goals. Your child cannot turn back now. Mm. My destiny is about to answer me. Mm. My dreams are finally close. Heavy words, heavy words. That this is the story of you guys. And I am so very inspired by all of you, and I hope you continue to support original music. And you realize that this is the same story that involves the Khmer Rouge and involves the temples and all that stuff. But this time, we're coming back, and we're going to do something awesome, and it won't be a sad story. So thank you guys for listening. No, Laura, ma'am. I mean, like, I'm really impressed with her presentation. I'm really impressed and came to know about a lot of things that I had no knowledge about, man. Wow, we always see the people actually who is in front of the camera, but there are too many people who are working behind the camera. That's why I always give credit to everybody, man, like even the producers, directors, the people who work behind, and she is beyond that. She's not only a director, she's a guardian, she's a risk 
taker, she's explorer. Damn, man, I like my respect just increased a lot for Laura Mem for what she did, you know. Born in America, not forgetting your root, going back to there, making your future over there. Who, like, there are thousands of people, must be not only Cambodia, I'm saying the third world countries, let's say, even included my country. Um, that's a dream for people to, you know, especially the people who was born in America, they will be like, okay, I want to have my future over here. Because, you know, whatever you do, you can do better than that place, right? That's a fact. Whatever. We love our country, definitely. But uh, the place of opportunity, the place of, uh, you know, like, that's that's America for, 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 for people. So she went back to her country, you know, started here. And then she went back to her country, did something for her country, for the culture, for the sake of art, not for making money. She could, she still could make money and maybe she lost her job. She could have another job, but for, not for the sake of money. Definitely business is always included in everything, but not only the sake of money, you know, the gap that they had after the Khmer Rouge, the, the story that we know, in the beginning of the video, she asked a question that why people know Cambodia. I wasn't talking a lot during the video because I wanted to know every single thing that what she has to say. So that's why I was just listening for a lot of people. You're going to be like, hey, what? <laughs> why you're just you're not saying anything? Because I wanted to know these are the new things. Khmer Rouge, like she was like, why people know internationally Cambodia? So even my answer was like Angkor Wat and Khmer Rouge. Because of that, people know. So they lost more than two millions of people, which is a big, big amount, like too big amount. And especially the singers, intellectuals, the artists, all the people, intelligent people were being killed that time. That's a black chapter of the history of Cambodia, definitely. Um, the blackest you can say and after that people started copying because they don't have originality everything that the, 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 the people who could do that they already did they kill them so you, you your art your culture stop in a place and it takes to grow from that place to this place you know that's a long time you know uh, it was like 80s or 70s the thing happened and 20 year 30 year 30 years the the industry, the culture was empty in a sense. People were doing different, different things, whatever, maybe copying different artists from international platform, even from their country. I have seen like you got since Sam Mood, a lot of artists, maybe copying only them, not not anything new. So the, 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 the thing she started, that's revolutionary now. Let's say even the Kamai um, hip hop, revolution let's say even in this she got a huge contribution Kamen Kamai is from there Van Vanda is from there uh, most of the young uh, rappers who are rapping in their country in, like a lot of people came from that level a lot of people they pushed those people I didn't know that they had hand behind even Prep Sovat and the lady singer forget the name but anyway, so they pushed it a lot, man. That's a huge movement. So my respect for Laura Mam really increased in this level. Not only her, for all the people who believed in her, all the people who, who supported her, especially the people like you, you and you, the people who are supporting the way she said was so beautiful. I really loved the presentation, the way she ended it. Even your like, one of your like, one of your comments, one of your shares really push the movement still but look this video is four years back you know the thing that they accomplished in 2022 it's even bigger i see the barami production is going singapore going like different countries they are not only in provinces the thing she said that we were into only provinces not really but now they are doing so and even i see that thailand 
you know, the artists are collaborating with different different countries artists, which is a, which is making something very big that the Khmer scene has not seen for a long long time. The originality is coming back, and originality is really really important for any culture, music, art, any kind of art. So be the part of the movement. Share this video. Share their video. You know, support the original artists and um, i would just say to even the sponsors the companies the agencies that support the artists not only artists like anybody who work in entertainment sector any sector these people need you support them if you don't support them how they're gonna feed their family you have to support them you know show your love the world is changing so you know just don't stuck into one thing open your eyes there are many more things that maybe you don't see but it has possibility but you have to take risk i think this video is going to inspire a lot of people i'm totally inspired but bro like if you have passion about something if you believe in your product just you know keep what you say promoting your product maybe not today but tomorrow it's gonna be successful so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video those of you guys suggested me this video thank you very very much jumrup leah